Wonderful day here at St. Andrew Church, this Holy Saturday, 2017, April 15th. We just had the great happiness of celebrating the liturgy of St. Basil the Great and uh, completing the catechism of uh, 28 dear people. This is the climax of, for some, uh, at least one year and some of them two years of instruction and preparation to become Orthodox Christians. Tremendous day of happiness for the parish to see uh, these people who have learned so much and have given so much of themselves to come to uh, completion and to be baptized into the Holy Orthodox Church and uh, to become these beautiful new plants. We're all dancing and uh, rejoicing at their uh, inclusion into the body of Christ and it's a tremendous encouragement to the whole community. The gospel lesson today was the account from St. Matthew's Gospel of Jesus after his resurrection commissioning his disciples to go into all of the world and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to observe everything that he commanded. This is the mission of the church. When we confess our belief in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, when we say we're apostolic, we don't just mean that we're built upon the foundation stones of the apostles and that we're holding fast to the sacred tradition that they imparted to us. We also mean that we are continuing their mission to the world. We have an outward orientation in the Orthodox Church. We love everyone and wish everyone to come to us. We want everyone to be washed by holy baptism. We want everyone to become the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit in chrismation. We want everyone to be deified by their participation in the Holy Eucharist. This is our desire and our little event today, which was such a happiness to us, we hope will continue in this parish. Uh, we have baptized and chrismated about 400 people in the 25 years of our existence here. A hearty congratulations to all of the 28 newly illumined of this parish and a hearty congratulations to all their sponsors, the some 30 or 40 godparents who opened their hearts and put new children inside and have promised to walk with them through the forests of this life until their last breath. Congratulations to all of you who have become so rich today in the birth of a child in your family. And congratulations to all the friends and the families of the newly illumined. To watch uh, those that you love make such a significant commitment to God, to pledge themselves by sacred oaths, to be Jesus's exclusively, and to serve Him above every other want or desire in their life. It's breathtaking and beautiful. To see them confess the creed of the church last night almost brought me to tears as they all said so profoundly and so boldly, I believe in one God. That solves everything right there. In, these age, in this age of confusion and of uncertainty, so full of doubt, not these ones. These believe in the one God and in His Son and the Holy Spirit in the church in which the Holy Trinity dwells. What a beautiful day. Oh, and while we're rejoicing, while we're dancing on this day, hell is crying its eyes out. Four times this morning, the beginning of the service, when we were chanting the Lord I have cried, the Kyrie Eke Kraksa, four times, four of the stikera started with these words, hell is sighing and crying. Hell is sighing and crying. Thank God, that voracious mouth that has swallowed up so many people. That horrible, hideous death. The power of the evil one. Such a temptation which governs this fallen world and keeps so many people in darkness, keeps so many people away from God, so many people in anxiety, so many people in brokenness in shattered relationships, in hopelessness, in distance from the good, does not rule this earth anymore. St. John the Beloved describes Jesus coming to the earth under this beautiful image. It's in the end of the apocalypse. 
that he saw coming from heaven a mighty angel, and in his hand was a massive chain. Just think the kind of chains that you put across harbors to keep boats out, and then increase that, I don't know, 10, 100 times. This is the kind of chain that the angel was carrying. Why? Because Christ was going to take it and bind the devil for a thousand years and was going to keep him in that bondage so that he would, quote, deceive the nations no longer. This same image Jesus uses in his teaching to describe what he's doing today. How he is making his truth advance and keeping the evil one bound so that he can't keep people in darkness. Jesus' words are like this. He said, no man can enter into the strong man's house and plunder his property unless he first binds the strong man and then he will plunder his house. Jesus said this because some people were watching him cast out demons and heal people's lives and they were not wanting to follow his sacred teachings. So the way that they explained this was by suggesting the reason he had power over the devils was that he was the greatest devil of all and he worked for the business. He was their master. The great Lord of Darkness, Beelzebub, can you imagine? Then to suggest Jesus, who was raising people from the dead, healing people's leprosy and sicknesses, saving their relationships, bringing them back from the edge, and to call him the Lord of Death. Oh, poor people, poor people. It was in this context to explain why the devil was losing so much ground, for why he no longer could hold people anymore. It was in this context that Jesus described his work of binding and plundering the property, the stolen property that belonged to the strong man who is the devil. Today, brothers and sisters, the church, Christ in his church, bound, pulled that chain a little tighter around the devil and took back 28 beautiful trophies God's own images. He took them back, planted them squarely in his church as new plants. This is the boast of the church. This is why we worship Christ. He is our king, and he is the king of these new 28 newly illumined. Follow him, dear ones. Follow him, be faithful to him. He'll fight for you until the end, and you'll inherit a kingdom by being faithful servants. What an auspicious day. Brothers and sisters, it was an absolutely Pentecostal experience, if I might use that word. <laughs> A tremendous joy and outflowing of grace. I want to congratulate, first of all, the parents today who have baptized their children. Because there is no parent that wants every good thing for their child. 
a warm and supportive home, an excellent education, health, healthy relationships, healthy friendships, every opportunity that could possibly be given. But greater than all of those gifts is the gift you gave your child today. And that is the gift of Christ himself dwelling in their hearts and the Orthodox faith, which is the light of our lives, which gives everything we do a deeper meaning, makes it richer, makes it joyous, and it imbues it with an importance because it's no longer done just for us or for them, but for the Lord's sake. And when we do something for the Lord, he makes it all the more beautiful all the more meaningful, all the more enriching in every possible way. And congratulations to each one of you who through God's providence in this day has been led to this great gift of the Holy Orthodox faith. If each one of us here this morning thinks about it, whether we were baptized as children or later on in life, it cannot be denied that in some mysterious way, the Lord himself, almost through no choice of our own, brought us to the circumstances, the people, and the church to give us this great and holy gift, the Orthodox faith. When you are baptized and chrismated, brothers and sisters, understand, it's not simply a washing away of sins. It's an indwelling in the heart, and not in the heart, in the secret place of the heart, in the altar of the heart, in the place behind the iconostasis, in the depth of our soul. That is where the Lord comes and dwells permanently. St. Mark the, the ascetic says he comes and he shuts the door and we must constantly knock and seek him because the kingdom of heaven is within you. That is the great gift that you have been received today. The Lord himself has come and made his abode within you. Now I have to conclude with the most beautiful and moving passage from St. John Chrysostom, who lists in one short sentence all the gifts that you have received in baptism. And I was, I was meditating on this sentence. I noticed that he started with the gift of freedom. That is the gift in Christ. He has given you freedom. Freedom not just from our past, freedom from our sins, freedom from all those things we wish we could take away. He gives us freedom for the future, freedom from anxiety, freedom from fear, freedom from opinion, freedom from anything that would prevent us from serving him wholeheartedly as we know he has called us to do. This is St. John's words, and I'll conclude with this. Before yesterday, you were captives, but now you are free. You have become citizens of the church. Lately, you lived in disgrace of your sins, but now you will live in freedom and righteousness. You are not only free, but also holy. You are not only holy, but also just. Not only just, but also sons. Not only sons, but also heirs not only heirs, but also brothers and sisters of Christ, and not only brothers and sisters of Christ, but also joint heirs with him, and not only joint heirs, but also members, and not only members, but also his temple, and not only his temple, but also the very instruments of the Holy Spirit. May our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you and grant you many years. What a day. Jesus said to his disciples, as my Father sent me, so I am sending you, that you might go and bear fruit. And this is my last word to you, Newly Lumens, today. The Lord God has called you like he's called many before you. And now he's saying to you, I want you to go. I want you to bear fruit. I want you to be as kind and gracious as the Christians that you've met who helped you come to baptism this day have been kind and gracious to you. 
be as loving, be as interested in people as the church has been interested in you. Reach out to them. You don't have to be a theologian. You don't have to be a priest. You just have to be a sincere, humble believer who can speak about his own experience, about what God has done for you. I have chosen you that you might go and bear fruit. Uh, it's a small effort, but we're hoping that it will grow, and we're hoping that this video might be an encouragement to our brothers and sisters throughout the United States and other places uh, to keep their hearts open to uh, the people outside their churches and to welcome them most enthusiastically to the Orthodox faith and to offer them their hearts and to offer them instruction and teaching to give them a catechism program that uh, is serious so that the people who are interested in or the Orthodox Church will know how dedicated to them we are, how interested in them we are, and they too can join us, be washed by the love of God and become members of the body of Christ and then themselves share what's happened to them with others. This is our great wish.